up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2024 volkswagen taos courtesy of hanover volkswagen in hanover pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we're in this one today because this is an affordable small suv you also get an above average bumper to bumper warranty as well I wanted to mention that you get four years or 50,000 miles on the bumper to bumper warranty which is traditionally better than the standard three-year 36,000 mile warranty you usually get on other manufacturers but there is one big change for the 2024 model year and this one is competing with the Chevy Trax, Mazda CX-30 and the Subaru Crosstrek just to name a few so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several trim levels for the 2024 taos first one being the s starting at twenty three thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars which surprisingly is actually 160 dollars less than the 2023 model year you never see that these days but se trim level which is the one we have today starting at twenty eight thousand one sixty five se black for thirty thousand three hundred sixty five dollars which is new for 2024 yes that is a new trim level for the 2024 model year and lastly the seo going for thirty three thousand five hundred and fifteen dollars by the way that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration if you wanted to add all wheel drive you can do that simply add two thousand three hundred and forty dollars to any of those prices but regardless of the trim level that you go with the power plant on the taos is going to be the same powering this little beast is a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 158 horsepower 5500 rpm 184 pound feet of torque coming in at 1700 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic for the front wheel drive or a seven speed dual clutch for the all wheel drive it's kind of interesting how the transmission setup is going to differ depending upon the uh, drivetrain that you go with so interesting there zero to 60 time approximately 8.5 seconds we'll test that out in a little bit here mpg numbers coming in at 28 in the city 36 on the highway for the front wheel drive 25 city 32 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel but so that before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our Taos I do want to mention to you guys the drive modes and so there's a circular dial located directly behind the shifter it really does give you a ton of different drive modes including eco normal sport and custom then you have to have some off-road modes as well including things like uh, just regular off-road mode there's also snow mode too so that's pretty cool but ultimately adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response the steering sensitivity things like that so now that we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new Volkswagen house here up to speed all right we are in sport driving mode in three two one go delay there it is <laughs> so a little bit of turbo lag there at the beginning and it's not the quickest thing in the world but you shouldn't have any issues emerging onto the highway. Dang, this thing is holding uh, upper RPMs here in sport driving mode, I will say that, but that's what sport driving mode does. I'm gonna put it back to normal there. So a little bit on the slower side of things, and there was a little bit of the uh, turbo lag at the very beginning there, but again, you shouldn't have any issues. It's one of those things where even if you have a slower vehicle, after driving it for a little bit, you learn how to drive it, just like vehicles with bad visibility, like the C8 Corvette or Lamborghinis or uh, Camaros and stuff like that. So you get used to it. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 12.3 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 10.7 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, that comes in at 129 feet, which I gotta be honest, isn't the best number on paper, but let's go ahead and hit the brakes here since nobody's behind us. It's a little bit on the softer side of things, but I guess that's to be expected with that number. And traditionally in SUVs, you do find soft braking feel. So Volkswagen wouldn't have minded if you beefed up the brakes a little bit there, at least made a firmer braking feel because that number is not the best, especially for a vehicle of this size. And uh, I don't know, it's just a unemotional braking feel. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension for the all-wheel drive, but then a torsion beam rear axle for the front wheel drive. So it is gonna differ dependent upon the configuration that you go with there. So anywho, front and rear stabilizer bars as well. As far as ride quality goes, 
It actually hasn't been that bad in my short little test drive here today. Gotta be honest, I just ran over some ridiculously unsmooth roads back there that I'm used to driving over, and this thing actually absorbed them pretty nicely. So as far as ride quality goes for a compact SUV like the Taos, I don't mind it. I think they did a pretty good job with that. Uh, as far as steering feel goes, let me actually go ahead and put it back in sport driving mode here. It's on the looser side of things. It's on the looser side of things. So even in that sport driving mode, I wouldn't have minded if they firmed that up a little bit, a little heavier of a steering feel. But again, that's to be expected in an SUV. You do usually get a loosey-goosey steering feel. So it's all good. As far as cabin noise goes, you do get a little bit of road noise, but it's not something that would bother me. Touching our rear visibility, it's brilliant, actually. I can see perfectly fine out of my rear view mirror. So definitely not going to have any issues with rear visibility. And touching on forward visibility a little bit, you do get rain sensing windshield wipers if you go with the se trim level and up that is the only way you're going to get it so not for the bottom trim but it's pretty cool because whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you so just kind of like automatic headlights just one less thing you got to worry about so i like it but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Volkswagen Taos. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Volkswagen Taos finished in deep black pearl. So if you are a Pirates of the Caribbean fan, this may be the one for you. But let's go ahead and start with where this one is made, taking a look at the VIN. First character is the number three, indicating that the new Taos is built and assembled in Mexico case you were curious but big change for 2024 that's going to be the se black trim level it's going to give you a black roof a black a pillar black mirror caps black spoiler black wheels black door handles everything blacked out basically so i'll just give you that but starting up front led headlights with led daytime running lights do come standard you get the automatic feature with that of course but it's kind of interesting with the headlights they're going to adjust depending upon the trim level that you go with so for the s and se trim levels you're going to get led reflector style headlights then with the se black and sel you get, get led projector style headlights so it's going to project out a little bit further with those top two trim levels so we did want to mention that but also with that sel you get an adaptive front lighting system that's pretty sweet so when you're going around a bend at night the headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or a sasquatch or an alien or a troll or a gnome or whatever the case so I like that feature. It's kind of a safety feature in itself. Bottom two corners there, you guys could probably see we got some massive front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination for a little better aerodynamics there. Also with the SE Black and SEL trim levels, you're gonna get a illuminated light bar within that front grille. So on both sides of that Volkswagen logo, you guys can see that matte black bar in our SE trim level. For the top two trims, that's gonna be an LED light bar. So that's kind of cool, but anywho, that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one, roof rails do come standard for all trim levels across the board. You guys can see those up top. Rear privacy glass for the SE trim level end up. Chrome belt line molding does come standard on the Taos. Got some Taos lettering found on those front fenders. That looks pretty darn good up there. Matte black side skirts do come standard for all trim levels across the board. I think it probably would have looked pretty darn good if maybe the SEL trim level gave you body colored accents rather than the matte black. Just a little suggestion for you there, Volkswagen. Power adjustable side mirrors do come standard. They will be heated then for the SE trim level and up. Then take a look down at the wheel setup. They will differ substantially depending upon the trim that you go with. So 17 inch alloys for the S, you're gonna get 18 inch alloys for the SE trims and then 19 inch alloys for the SEL. But that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the back. All right, and so now since we are around to the back of this one, all the way to the top, body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper. Do you have those LED tail lights? They do come standard for every single trim level across the board. That isn't always the case. So I do want to mention that. One of the weird things though I don't like about the back end is those uh, kind of chrome accent pieces on the bottom corners there. It's almost like they wanted you to think that that's exhaust outlets, but it's not. It's just filled in with plastic, but I don't know. I just doesn't, I don't think it needs to be there. I'll just put it that way because the actual exhaust is tucked away underneath it as a single exhaust outlet. So anyways, having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All 
right, so now since we are around to the back of the towel. So when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a manual tailgate for all trim levels across the board. However, there is a button on the key fob to go ahead and unlock it if you wanted to use that, but simply just lift up on the rubberized button in the back and open it up. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 28 cubic feet even. If that was not enough space, there's a 60-40 split, so the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 66 cubic feet, which actually is kind of impressive for the class, I will say that. Uh, you do have some cargo lighting back there, an LED cargo lighting, by the way, so that was pretty cool to see. Uh, you have a few different grocery bag hooks, including one absolutely massive grocery bag hook, probably the biggest grocery bag hook in the industry, if that's a catchphrase. Uh, you got some tie-down anchors back there. There's a 12-volt power outlet, and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a spare tire which you guys know i love to see but then making our way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 37.9 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the back there rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard you do get rear ventilation as well and there is actually a single usb charging port so one of your two kids can stay charged up <laughs> anyway i'm just kidding but then making our way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seats coming with the s trim level eight-way power driver seat with power lumbar for the s SE trim level and up. I loved that. Heated front seats for the SE trim level and up as well. And then leather seating for the SEL trim level. So overall though, my short little test drive here today, I actually didn't have any issues with the seat comfort. So it's perfectly fine. It kind of feels like suede a little bit almost. I know it's not, but uh, cause it's cloth, but it's a pretty cool fabric. I'll just say that, but then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leatherette wrapped for the SE trim level and up and then heated for the SEL trim level. But then making our way to the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key. You got your Volkswagen logo on the one side. Then when you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to or unlock the rear tailgate and then the times two button. That is your remote start that comes on the SE trim level and up. So you can warm this thing up on cold days, but it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that silver engine start button located kind of just in front of the shifter so once started up though as far as the gauge cluster goes you're going to find an eight inch digital gauge cluster for the s se and se black trim levels and then a 10 and a quarter inch digital gauge cluster for that sel but gauges actually aren't that bad quite honestly so there's a view button on the right hand side of the steering wheel if you press that you got a bunch of different views you got kind of an informational view and then you have a speedometer view which is a massive digital speedometer front and center and then you got the kind of tachometer with the digital speed in the middle that's a cool view too you also have of how many miles you have left until you hit empty there's your outside temperature trip a trip b there's a little compass as well so i think they did pretty darn good for the price range no doubt so then making our way to overall interior quality a panoramic sunroof coming on the sel trim level auto dimming rear view mirror i like that for the sel trim level as well dual zone climate control for the se trim level and up and by the way that is new for 2024 you didn't used to get dual zone climate control on the se trim level so that's pretty cool so both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures there ambient lighting for the sel trim level wireless phone charger for the se trim level and up overall i will say interior is kind of on the basic side of things just above the passenger side glove box you do have the hard plastic there so wouldn't mind it if they added kind of a design to that i think that would have looked good i do like the two-tone leather or leather whatever it is on the doors i think that looks pretty darn good uh just in front of the shifter besides the wireless phone charge you also have a 12 volt power outlet couple usb charging ports now surrounding the shifter you do have this matte black plastic you guys know i always grip on that would have been cool if they finished that in the gloss black so that's just my personal opinion just behind that you have a couple cup holders a little bit of storage there and within the center armrest it's actually a decent amount of deep storage in there for its class so i'll just say that so it's kind of on the basic side of things but it gets the job done. I'll just put it that way. So then taking a look at the infotainment screen, you're gonna find a 6.5 inch color touchscreen display for the S trim level, eight inch color touchscreen display for the SE trim level and up, Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, either way, factory navigation system is actually going to come on the sel trim level only you can also check out your vehicle statistics up there if you wanted to also your radio information of course so when it comes to the sound systems there are two of them you're going to find six speakers for the s se and se black trims but then an eight speaker beats sound system for the sel so we do have the six speaker with us here today so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio let's see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one what if the all right beautiful song first off second off 
uh, there was actually a decent amount of clarity, not a ton of bass, but for a six speaker sound system, that wasn't that bad. Not, not my favorite six speaker sound system, but again, the clarity is good, not a ton of bass, beautiful song. Last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put this thing in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Not the high quality rear view camera out there, but that's okay, it still gets the job done. And that, as always, is going to lead us into safety. So front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers to children for the rear car seats. Rear child door locks, top person monitoring system, but also coming standard. Blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. That's crazy that that comes standard, but forward collision warning with autonomous emergency braking and newly standard for 2024 adaptive cruise control so a lot of changes for 2024 actually sdl trim level then is going to add roadside recognition automatic high beams rear parking sensors pedestrian monitoring and lane keep assist then as well so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here you do get lots of space for its class like i mentioned to you guys in the video there I think that's pretty darn good. Um, it's a good deal, especially considering the starting price point of this thing. Digital gauges are pretty darn good as well. The fact that you get digital gauges and even the bottom trim level is pretty sweet. Nice exterior design. I definitely don't have any issues with that. Pretty comfy seats as well. I mentioned that to you guys. If I would give maybe two constructive criticisms, it would be the fake exhaust outlets in the back. I think they look kind of silly. And uh, also the interior quality is kind of on the basic side. But again, I have a feeling they probably had to do that just to kind of keep the price down. But even if they put like a plastic design, like around the shifter, it doesn't have to be this matte black plastic. They could do like a silver plastic with a cool honeycomb mesh design or something, or gloss black would be my preferred, but whatever. But overall, I think the Taos actually offers a pretty decent value proposition here. So anyways, that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think of the Taos in the comment section below. That's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that's what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. Stay gold.